So this is my attempt at visualizing special relativity. Disclaimer, I'm not an expert on the subject, and this video could be entirely wrong. Oh well. Okay, so let's start with a story. Right when Leafy and Bubble are born, Leafy watches Bubble turn on a lamp from nearby. Five years later, Bubble decides to go to Ice Cube's star. You know what star I'm talking about. Hey, Ice Cube, look! It's the Big Dipper! This star is for you! Thanks! In this world, Ice Cube's star is almost four light years away. Bubble accelerates faster and faster toward it until she's going 70% the speed of light. Once she reaches Ice Cube's star, she turns right around and heads home, also at 70% the speed of light. As Bubble travels back, Ice Cube's star and Yoyo Land both explode abruptly. Finally, Bubble meets up with Leafy again. Let's imagine this story taking place in a universe with only one spatial dimension, the Y-axis. Then, the story looks like this. If we plot position on the y-axis, and time on the x-axis, then we can visualize every event on just one image. We can see the photons of light moving outward, Bubbles round trip, and the death of the star and Yoyo Land, which appear to happen at the same time. Each little dot on the line is a birthday. How cute! But hold on! When Bubble returned home, she ended up almost three years younger than Leafy, who stayed put. I'm sure you've heard of this before. If an object is moving really fast, its time slows down. But why does this happen? Let's find out. First off, there are two rules that are always true. Rule 1, you can change your frame of reference so that any non-accelerating object is completely still. You know, if you watch a car drive by, it looks like the earth is still and the car is moving, but if you're in the car, the car is staying still and the earth is moving. And both frames of reference are correct. Rule 2, the speed of light appears the same for every observer. The second rule seems a bit weird, because if you're in a car going half the speed of light, doesn't the light going 100% the speed of light in front of you only go half the speed of light relative to you? No. Okay, let's look at the story again, but this time from Leafy's frame of reference. But wait, what is a frame of reference? I'm gonna say that when you take on some object's frame of reference, you see that object as perfectly still. Furthermore, the frame of reference is a snapshot of what the entire universe looked like at that exact moment in time. What do I mean? Well, you might think that Leafy doesn't see Yoyo Land's disappearance for one year, and Ice Cube Star's disappearance for four years because light takes time to travel. But no, I'm going to pretend that Leafy is all-knowing so that from her frame of reference at this exact moment, Yoyo Land and Ice Cube Star explode. Just think of a frame of reference as a snapshot of the whole universe at once. The story from Leafy's perspective is pretty boring. Leafy doesn't move, so everything happens exactly as we expect. Let's switch to Bubble's perspective now. For the first five years, everything is the same. But then, Bubble starts moving north. She's an early adventurer. Before we get there, let's think about what should happen when our frame of reference starts moving. First of all, the object we're following has to stay still, meaning its line on our space-time graph must stay horizontal. Secondly, the speed of light must stay constant, meaning exactly one-to-one -one diagonal. Light always moves one light year in a year, no exceptions. Under the classic view of space and time, we'd see this. Notice that vertical lines, meaning things happening at the same time, stay vertical, which means that there is no time distortion whatsoever. Therefore, Bubble ends up the same age as Leafy, 20 years old. However, one glaring error makes this view incorrect the rays of light aren't perfectly one-to-one -one diagonal. That means the rule that the speed of light is the same for all observers was broken. This view of space-time must be wrong. Okay, so if we want to change our frame of reference from the ground to this glowing Yoyoberry that's moving at half the speed of light, what do we do? Maybe we could rotate the whole graph to make its trajectory horizontal? No, that doesn't work. The speed of these light photons is no longer perfectly diagonal. What if we skew the whole graph vertically? When we skew vertically, vertical slices of the image stay vertical, but they move up and down proportionally to how far they are away from our object of reference horizontally. A simple vertical skew is also exactly what we saw in the classical view of space-time. However, that doesn't work either because the speed of light is still not diagonal. Let's try a third type of transformation, scaling. Here's horizontal and vertical scaling. Notice how horizontal and vertical lines stay horizontal and vertical under the scaling. But we're not focused on keeping horizontal and vertical lines the same, 
We're focused on keeping one-to-one -one diagonal lines the same, so that the speed of light stays constant. Fortunately, scaling doesn't have to just be in these two directions, we can also do diagonal scaling. And when we do this, one-to-one -one diagonal lines do indeed stay the same. However, horizontal and vertical lines now change a bit, which means that both time and space will get distorted, but that is okay. This means we can play around with diagonal scaling as much as we want, without worrying about disturbing the speed of light. There is one thing we do have to worry about, though, the area of the spacetime graph. We have to keep the area of the spacetime graph the same. Why? Well, space and time can sort of be exchanged, but they can't be increased and decreased out of nowhere. So for any amount we enlarge the graph by in one direction, say like 3 halves, we have to balance it out by shrinking the graph the same amount in the other direction, so like 2 thirds. That way, the area always stays constant. Even with this restriction, we've still got enough wiggle room to take any line of any slope, like this one, and make it horizontal. Here's some other examples. The only exception is if the line is going at or faster than the speed of light, but we'll talk about that later. So that's it. All we gotta do is fidget around with the diagonal scaling a little bit to make the object of our frame of reference have a horizontal trajectory, keeping in mind of course that the area must be constant. This transformation is called a Lorentz transformation, I think. 